Good afternoon. I'm Constable Mike Kudrasov, and I will be the moderator for this press conference, which will provide an update on the investigation of the Berrigan Drive homicide. Bonjour, je suis l'agent Mike Kudrasov, et votre moderateur pour cette conférence de presse qui fera le point sur l'enquête concernant l'homicide de la promenade Berrigan. Nos participants sont le chef Eric Stubbs, le maire Mark Sutcliffe, la chef adjointe Trish Ferguson, and the superintendent, Jamie Dunlop. Our speakers today are Chief of Police Eric Stubbs, the Mayor Mark Sutcliffe, Deputy Chief Trish Ferguson, and Superintendent Jamie Dunlop. Also in attendance with us today, également présent aujourd'hui, est Barhaven Councillors Wilson Lowe and David Hill, and City of Ottawa Manager Wendy Stephenson. For everyone's awareness, we are broadcasting this live on YouTube as well. We will now begin with Chief Eric Stubbs. Thank you, Mike. Good afternoon. This afternoon, we will be providing an update on a tragic act of violence in Barhaven that has left six people deceased, including four young children, as well as one injured male. Before I continue, I want to acknowledge that this has been a very difficult complex and active investigation. Some of the details we will share today are disturbing. Here's what we can tell you. At about 10.52 yesterday evening, the Ottawa Police Service received two 911 calls from the Berrigan Drive area reporting a suspicious incident where a male was yelling and asking people to call 911. Our team was immediately dispatched and the first officer arrived on scene minutes later. As multiple units began to arrive, officers identified a suspect who was quickly arrested without incident. Paramedics were also called and were arriving. Officers entered the home to check on the safety of those inside, and that is where they began to discover the six victims, the youngest of which is less than three months old. The family are newcomers to Canada and are originally from Sri Lanka. We have been working to advise the families of the deceased, many of whom are overseas. The father and husband of the victims was found at the scene and was injured. He was taken to hospital where he is in serious but stable condition. The deceased are 35-year-old Darshani Bombar Anayake Ekanayake. She is the mother of the children. Their seven-year-old son, Anuka, Wikrama Singay, their four-year-old daughter, Ashwini, their two-year-old daughter, Rinayana, and their two-and-a-half-month-old daughter, Kelly. Also found deceased is 40-year-old Americone Gamini Americone, who is an acquaintance of the family who has been living at the home. He recently arrived in Canada. The investigation has found that an edged weapon was used to cause the deaths and injuries. To be clear, this was a mass killing, not a mass shooting. We have arrested and charged a 19-year-old male, Frank D'Souza, with six counts of first-degree murder and one count of attempted murder. The accused is a Sri Lankan national who is believed to have been in Canada as a student. I'll, emph I'll emphasize he is the only suspect. We know there are a lot of questions about why this tragedy occurred. This is the focus of our homicide unit as they diligently investigate this tragic crime. Our investigators and forensic teams are working very hard to determine all of the facts and ensure justice is done. But that also means we must maintain the integrity of the investigation for court. I want to emphasize, this was a senseless act of violence perpetrated on purely innocent people. I know our whole community is shocked and mourning this event. I want to offer my condolences to the loved ones of all the victims for this unimaginable loss. We are offering supports and we know the community is mobilizing. We have reached out to the community leaders, their temple, and the Sri Lankan High Commission. We will ensure that we maintain that communication to assist their community. Of note, 
Two of the children attended local schools and we have also reached out to the school board. We ask that anyone needing support please reach out to the Distress Centre available 24-7 at 613-238-3311. This one will undoubtedly weigh on the hearts of everyone for a long time. A vigil has been established at the Palmdeo Park at the corner of Palmdeo Drive and Rodeo Drive in memory of the victims. We ask that the public avoid the area of the crime scene as police continue to investigate. I am also mindful of the impact this investigation can have on our members and other emergency responders. We all are also offering supports and critical incident debriefs to all affected members. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. I will now introduce uh, Deputy Chief Trish Ferguson and maintenant le chef adjoint Trish Ferguson. Bonjour et bienvenue. Cet après-midi, nous allons vous mettre à jour sur un tragique acte de violence à Barhaven qui a fait six morts, dont quatre jeunes enfants. Avant de poursuivre, je tiens à souligner qu'il s'agit d'une enquête très difficile, complexe et active. Certains des détails dont nous allons vous faire part aujourd'hui sont dérangeants. Voici ce que je peux vous dire. Vers 22h52 hier, le service de police d'Ottawa reçut deux appels au 911 des environs de la promenade Berrigan et signalant un incident suspect où un homme criait à l'aide, demandant aux gens de faire le 911. Des agents furent immédiatement dépêchés sur les lieux et le premier agent arriva sur place quelques minutes après. Alors que plusieurs policiers arrivent, les agents purent identifier un suspect qui fut vite arrêté sans, sans incident. Les ambulanciers paramédicaux avaient aussi été appelés et arrivèrent bientôt. Pardon. Des agents entrèrent, entrèrent dans ce demeure pour vérifier si ceux qui se trouvaient à l'intérieur étaient en sûreté. C'est alors qu'ils commencèrent à découvrir les six victimes, dont la plus jeune était âgée de moins de trois mois. Nous nous affairons à viser les familles des défunts, dont plusieurs se trouveraient outre-mer. Un homme, le père et mari des victimes, fut trouvé sur les lieux, blessé. Il fut transporté à l'hôpital, où il repose dans un état grave, mais stable. Les victimes sont Darshani Banbaraniaki et Kananiaki, âgée de 35 ans. Celle-ci est la mère des enfants. Leur fils, Inuka Wikramashin, âgée de 7 ans. Leur fille, Ashniwini, âgée de 4 ans. Leur fille, Rinyana, âgée de 2 ans. Et leur fille, Kelly, âgée de 2 mois et demi. Aussi trouvé mort, Amarakon Gamini Amarakon, âgée de 40 ans, une connaissance de la famille qui habitait avec eux. Il était récemment arrivé au Canada. L'enquête a permis d'établir une arme tranchante fut employée pour causer les morts et blessures. La famille, originaire du Sri Lanka, était récemment arrivée au Canada. Deux des enfants fréquentaient des écoles locales. Nous avons pris contact avec le conseil scolaire. Nous avons arrêté un homme âgé de 19 ans, donc Fébrio de Souza, et l'avons inculpé de six chefs de meurtre au premier degré, et d'un chef de tentative de meurtre. L'accusé est un ressortissant Sri Lankais qui serait au Canada comme étudiant. Nous savons qu'il y a de nombreuses questions quant aux raisons de cette tragédie. C'est là-dessus que se concentre notre unité des homicides, alors qu'elle enquête assiduement sur ce crime insensé afin d'établir la preuve dans cette affaire. Nos équipes d'enquêteurs et d'identifiés judiciaires travaillent arrache-pied à éclaircir tous les faits pour garantir une justice soit faite. Mais cela signifie également que nous devons protéger l'intégrité de l'enquête pour les tribunaux. C'est clair, il s'agit d'un acte de violence insensé perpétré contre des gens simplement innocents. Je sais que notre entière collectivité est bouleversée et éplorée par ces événements. Après cette perte inimaginable, je tiens à exprimer mes sincères condoléances aux proches de toutes les victimes. 
Nous proposons des ressources de soutien et nous, avons, nous savons que la collectivité se mobilise. Je tiens aussi à reconnaître, reconnaître la douleur ressentie dans la communauté, tant ici à Ottawa qu'à l'étranger. Des ressources de soutien à détention des victimes et de la communauté ont été mises en place dans le quartier et les écoles afin de réconforter la collectivité en cette période épouvante. Nous prions quiconque ayant besoin d'un tel appui de s'adresser au centre d'étresse pour un service 24 heures sur 24 en composant le 613-238-3311. Cette tragédie pèsera dans une, doute fort, sans doute fort longtemps sur le cœur en chacun d'entre nous. En souvenir des victimes, une vigile a été établie au parc Palmadeo, au coin des promenades Palmadeo et Rodeo. Nous prions aux gens d'éviter les environs des lieux du crime, tandis qu'il se poursuit l'enquête policière. Je suis aussi consciente de l'incendie, l'incidence, pardon, de cette affaire pourrait avoir sur notre, nos membres et d'autres intervenants d'urgence. Nous proposons du soutien et des entretiens à tous les membres du corps policier touché. Nous serons disponibles à répondre du, des questions à, après un mot du maire. Thank you, Deputy Chief. We will now have some comments from Mayor Mark Sutcliffe. Mayor, the floor is yours. This morning, the residents of our wonderful city woke up to the news of a shocking and devastating event in the beautiful and peaceful community of Barhaven. Cette nouvelle a choqué de nombreux, nombreux résidents de la ville d'Ottawa et bien sûr, elle est particulièrement troublée, troublante pour les voisins et tous qui vivent au, à Barhaven. This news has shaken many residents throughout Ottawa and of course it's particularly troubling to neighbors and anyone living in Barhaven. And I know I speak for my colleagues uh, Wilson Lowe and David Hill who are here today when I say that Barhaven is a wonderful and rapidly growing community filled with warm and welcoming families and neighbors. So it's hard to believe that something like this could happen there or anywhere else in our city. Il est particulièrement troublant pour moi en tant que parent d'entendre parler de la perte de quatre, quatre enfants très jeunes. It is particularly troubling for me as a parent to hear of the loss of four children of very young ages. It is very difficult to think about, very difficult to process. Just yesterday, I met a group of students from Barhaven from very close to where this event took place. They came to sing the national anthem before our city council meeting yesterday at City Hall, and it was wonderful to see their bright faces. So it's devastating and heartbreaking to think that only a few minutes away from their school last night, four children and two adults were killed. Comme le chef Stubbs l'a confirmé, je tiens à assurer aux résidents d'Ottawa qu'il n'y a pas de menace pour la sécurité publique. As Chief Stubbs has confirmed, I want to assure the residents of Ottawa that there is no broader threat to public safety. And I want to personally thank the chief, the deputy chief, the police service, and all the emergency personnel who responded to this event and have been supporting those affected by it. I can only imagine how difficult it is to witness such a terrible tragedy, and our emergency personnel uh, deserve our support and gratitude for their work uh, during the last 12 to 14 hours. While it will be difficult for many of us to go about our usual routines in the face of such tragedy, again, there is no risk to the public. We are fortunate to live in a safe city where these events are extremely rare. But everyone, understandably, will react to this news today and feel less safe and secure. To the family and neighbors and friends of those immediately affected by this tragedy, I want you to know that the entire city of Ottawa stands with you. And our thoughts and, and our prayers extend to each and every one of you during this extremely difficult time. There are resources available to anyone who needs help. 
aux familles, voisins et amis immédiatement touchés par cette tragédie. Je veux que, je veux que vous sachiez que toute la ville d'Ottawa est à vos côtés et que nous pense, nos pensées et nos prières s'adressent à chacun d'entre vous en cette période incroyablement difficile. Throughout our large but very tightly knit community, people will be affected by this, they will be shaken by this, and in the face of this grief and sadness and sorrow, let's pull together as a community. Let's reach out to each other. Let's check in on each other and let's support each other. It is in times of tragedy that we often see the very best in people. And I know that will be true in Barhaven and throughout Ottawa in the hours and days ahead. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Mayor. We will now open the floor to some questions. Due to the amount of people inside today, I will be passing around a microphone and I will ask that you ask only one question. Vous pouvez poser seulement uniquement une question. When you have the microphone, please identify yourself and your news agency. On va commencer, we will start with Gillian Piper with Global News. You said it was an edged weapon. Can you tell me any more about the weapon, when you found it, uh, what it was? We won't talk much about the weapon. Uh, you know, an edge weapon is, uh, you, know, you know what that means, that's, uh, that's a knife-like uh, object and that's, uh, that's what was used. And you can confirm that was for all the victims? Yes. Including the one that was injured, not dead? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Do I have a follow-up? <clears throat> Sorry. We'll now move on to Dave Charbonneau with CTV News. No question. Uh, CBC. Perfect. Hi, Chief. Um, my question is about the suspect and his connection to the victims. Um, was the suspect known to the victims? What is the connection? Can you speak to that? Yeah, we did mention that the suspect uh, is an acquaintance of the family and was living in the house at the time. I was hoping you could tell me anything further than that. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, that's something that our homicide team is looking into in terms of uh, digging deeper into that relationship, but that is what we're prepared to talk about right now. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> city News. Anyone from City News? No. Post Media. Citizen. Yeah. Citizen. <coughs> Hi, Marlo Glass with The Citizen. Um, the suspect, is he connected to any other crimes or known to police in any way? I, I can say that we have never dealt with that suspect in Canada before, nor with that family or that residence. Certainly. And Mike, if you'll let me, um, th you mentioned that there is the man who was in the street, you know, yelling, and that was why people called 911. Mm -hmm. That was the 19-year-old, right? There wasn't another person um, involved. I'm not saying that was the 19-year-old, no. Okay. No, that's not accurate. <clears throat> Alors, Félix Pilon ou David Bates with La Cité. Do you have a question? Vous avez une question? Non. Lise avec Le Devoir. Vous avez dit que euh, le suspect était relié à la famille en anglais. Est-ce que vous pouvez juste clarifier? Parce que j'avais compris que c'était la personne qui avait 40 ans, qui était euh, reliée à la famille, une connaissance de la famille et vivait avec eux. Mm -hmm. Puis sur la personne qui criait dans la rue, est-ce qu'on comprend que c'est le père qui a appelé le 911? Oui. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alors... Euh, Le, le personne qui était âgée à Maracoun, euh, 40 ans, euh, c'était pas le même, le même euh, monsieur que le suspect de 19 ans. Alors, le suspect de 19 ans, mais il y avait un autre euh, mâle adulte qui était dans la, avec la famille qui restait là aussi. Donc, les deux vivaient à la maison. Oui, oui. Puis l'homme qui criait, c'est celui qui a pris le père qui a appelé le matin. Oui. Mickey with Canadian Press. Right here. Can you confirm, or I guess, can you say who the man was calling for help? Was it the father, and did he come home to discover his family dead? Um, I won't talk about, uh, the, you know, the, um, you know, the sequence of events that occurred there. That we still have to investigate that and determine that. Yeah, but the, 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 the male in the street was uh, the father, the husband. Yes. Judy Trin, CTV News. Thank you. Can you give us a little more? information you said that the 19 year old international student lived there 
was he subletting, and as well as there was a 40-year-old friend, mm -hmm. was that individual also living there and subletting with this family? We yeah. As we understand who was living in the house, um, as, well, as we described, we still have a lot of work to do to really understand exactly everybody's situation, why they were there, um, and, uh, and, their, and their backgrounds and whatnot. Um, as we said, we're 12, 14 hours into this investigation, so that's some work that we need to, uh, that we need to continue with. Yeah, I do know that. Um, I, I think, as often occurs, some come first and then others follow. And of course, we have we have a two and a half month old uh, um, that that is deceased and born in Canada. So there, I think there was different times uh, throughout the, the the recent years that they've come into Canada. <coughs> plus gros mass murder à Ottawa jamais, que la ville a jamais connu? Vous pouvez répondre dans les deux, là. Oui, dans les années récentes, oui, euh, mais on ne peut pas dire comme euh, depuis jamais, euh, mais nous, nous avions euh, pensé que c'est, oui, c'est un des plus grands. Absolument. So the, the question there was, what, is this the largest uh, murder in, in Ottawa's history? And it certainly is, um, you know, in recent memory, and we have some people that have worked uh, in Ottawa here for over 30 years, and in that, in that time period, they, they haven't seen one um, as significant as this. Monsieur le maire, d'abord. Donc, Qu'est-ce que vous pensez qui pourrait être fait prochainement par votre équipe, par le conseil municipal, par euh, les, la sécurité communautaire? C'est un drame qui choque, là. Donc, qu'est-ce qui pourrait être fait? Tout d'abord, euh, c'est très important de, de soutenir euh, les, la, la famille de les victimes et euh, les voisins, les amis, euh, la communauté de Barhaven. Alors, euh, nous, sommes, nous sommes ici et il y a des ressources euh, disponibles pour soutenir les, euh, tout, tous les personnes affectées par euh, cette, euh, cet événement tragique. Et après ça, euh, on verra s'il y a des décisions à prendre. Uh, je ne sais pas encore parce que c'est trop tôt. Étienne uh, Malouin avec TVA. Bonjour. Uh, juste pour comprendre, uh, le jeune de 19 ans, vous, vous mentionnez qu'il visiblement était au pays pour les études. Depuis combien de temps il était, il était à Ottawa? Je ne sais pas ça, uh, les, les détails exacts, uh, mais récemment, comme... Et M. Sockley, vous avez euh, mentionné ce matin sur, euh, sur les réseaux sociaux que c'était un des crimes, des événements les plus épouvantables de violence euh, de l'histoire de, de la ville d'Ottawa. Peut-être développer un peu là-dessus à quel point ce, cet événement-là, ça, ça marque l'imaginaire. On ne pense pas que ce type d'événement-là puisse produire à Ottawa. Non, euh, nous sommes chanceux que Ottawa est une ville très, très sécuritaire. Alors, c'est vraiment rare et, et c'est pourquoi c'est vraiment choquant et, et, euh, et moi, j'étais euh, dévasté d'entendre ces nouvelles euh, ce matin. Euh, ce n'est pas quelque chose que nous, nous pensons à, à, à des événements comme ça à Ottawa. C'est vraiment rare. Alors, euh, je, suis, je suis dévasté et, et en tant que parent, de, en tant que père, c'est c'est vraiment difficile pour moi d'entendre les âges des enfants. Ils sont très, très jeunes et euh, c'est difficile à comprendre. Jillian Viper, Global News. Um, what oh, is sorry, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, I'll take it. What's the condition of the person in hospital? I missed your question. The Malin Hospital is in serious but stable condition. Globin uh, Globin Mail, Olivia Barrett. No question. Yannick Saint Denis, 104.7. No question. Uh, myself, Jean-Pierre Bernard, La Presse Montréal. Thanks. 
Euh, le suspect de 19 ans, est-ce qu'on a une indication d'un dossier médical, un historique de troubles mentaux? Non, on n'a pas de dossier. Merci. Is there somebody that I did not get to? Isabel Harder, New York Times. Um, can I ask why the police are not calling this a domestic incident if it was perpetrated by people living in the same dwelling? Um, generally, when we uh, we talk about intimate partner violence, that is uh, the parameters that we use in, in that regard. Um, so we are not um, referring to this one as an intimate partner violence uh, incident. <clears throat> Bonjour, Olivier de TVA. Vous avez dit que l'arrestation s'est produite rapidement pour ce qui est du suspect. C'est possible de savoir s'il si, euh, a résisté, euh, puis également à quel endroit il se trouvait lorsqu'il a été arrêté? Euh, je n'ai pas les détails euh, pour sa location exacte, euh, mais il n'y avait, avait pas de problème avec l'arrestation. Ça, c'est fait. Oui, non. Is there anyone else that uh, did not ask a question yet? I just want to confirm something that's already been said, if that's okay. I don't have a further question. I just want to confirm the, <clears throat> both the acquaintance and the suspect, the acquaintance being the uh, sixth deceased person, were known to the family and living with the family? Correct. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you all for attending today. That uh, ends our media conference. Thank you. Tout le monde, merci de votre présence.